Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Have you ever done something really cool but not realized it at the time and then went back later and said like, oh my gosh, I did something really cool? Well, that's exactly what happened to me. Just a few days ago, I managed to set up a five node Proxmox VE cluster and I had everything working. I had migrations of virtual machines and containers. I had images downloaded, all that kind of stuff in a total of 22 minutes. And in that 22 minutes, my total cost for this entire project was only like $1. So I totally thought to myself, I was like, wait a sec, there's absolutely no way that I actually did that. So I actually went back and I redid it yesterday and it worked out and I looked at the you know screen recording time and it was a total of 22 minutes and seven seconds, even though I had a phone call in the middle. So I definitely was not working on it for a little bit. So this is absolutely cool. And I was thinking to myself, I was like, hey, I bet a bunch of people could really benefit from being able to see, you know, how can you go set up a cluster of Proxmox bare metal servers, like not even going and doing VMs or anything like that, doing nested virtualization, like actually going out and doing a five node cluster. And let's go kind of look at what that looks like and what it looks like to go set up something that fast and that inexpensively. Now, hey, one thing I do want to get to before, you know, we get too far in this is that we did actually do a little bit on like checking out the Phoenix Snap Bare Metal Cloud. And that's actually kind of how I started this thing. And Phoenix Snap was paying for the instances that we were using, although this one I'm paying for because it's a dollar and like whatever. But I do want to just kind of say like, hey, you know, we did we did uh, get the support for the instances when we did that piece. So just, just keeping everything fully above board, just wanna let you guys know that that's going on. And since it only costs a dollar, I'm paying for this one and they have absolutely no idea that this is coming out. So they're gonna probably find out sometime after you guys do. And the last little bit of setup is just the fact that I did have an existing account. One thing that you would have to go do if you were doing this and you didn't have an account with Phoenix Snap is you'd actually have to go sign up and just kind of go through their account sign up process. I'm not gonna walk you through that because it has a lot of personal details. And you know, I think most people can figure out a sign up form. So with that, let's get to the screen capture and I am going to fast forward a couple of parts. And that's just because there are a couple parts where like things are installing and like is either progress bars or like nothing's moving. And so for those parts, uh, I'm just going to tell you when I have to fast forward because otherwise it's going to be really boring to just kind of look at screens that aren't moving. So anyway, let's get to it. Okay. So the first thing is that when you log into the bare metal cloud, one of the first things that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to set up your API credentials and also your SSH credentials. We're not going to go through that. It's super easy. It takes like 10 seconds. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to deploy a new server and let's get to that part. Okay. So a couple things of what we're doing here. First, we're going to use the Phoenix, Arizona facility. We're not going to use one of their other locations. This is their bare metal cloud. So they have you know multiple locations worldwide, but we're just going to use Phoenix. We're also going to use the hourly billing. You do get a discount if you go reserved, but we're only going to have this up for an hour. So we don't really necessarily need to go and you know sign up for a month. We only need it for an hour. Now to keep the cost to exactly $1, you have to use a specific set of five instances. And so we're gonna be doing three different types of instances. We're gonna do a single, very small 10 cent an hour instance. We're gonna be doing two 12 cent an hour instances. And then we're gonna be doing two newer 33 cent an hour instances. And the reason for that is just to hit the $1 price point. If you wanna go spin up things that are bigger or smaller, you can totally go do that as well. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to go down to the operating system and we're going to pick Proxmox because uh, clearly that's the one that we're going to use for a Proxmox tutorial. And then on the next screen, what you basically have to do is you have to set up a host name. And one thing I like to do is I always like to just go and create a little host name so that way they're in order or something like that. So that way it's easy to you know find them later. And the other thing is we want to keep our login details available. So you can also put a, a description, but I'm just not going to waste too much time in this video doing the description. But I have a little notepad off to the right hand side, and that is going to have all the information that we need in terms of keeping all of our passwords and stuff like that that'll get generated. We get a total of five IP addresses. And one thing that you can do is you can whitelist IP and restrict you know, what can access the machine, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to say anybody on the internet can connect, and we're also going to use our public SSH key. And once we're done with that, we can actually go and look at our password. And with our password, you know, we get a password that is randomly generated by the Phoenix Snap team. And then we also get the login URL. Once we're done with that, we can go and deploy that server and you can actually see that it's starting to provision. Now, while that one is provisioning, it's time to go set up on number two. So this one, we're gonna use the S0D1 medium, which is our 12 cent an hour instance. We're gonna basically go through the exact same setup. One thing to remember is always, you have to go back to Proxmox because it'll default to Ubuntu and then give it a host name, give it public IP addresses, make sure that you set your IP access. Again, we're gonna make this public, not best practice. We're just doing it for the demo. And then you're gonna copy and paste all of the 
password and then also the details to go and hit the right web page. And that's really the management page for Proxmox. And you see that now we have our second system already done and ready to go. And now we're gonna go make our next system. Again, we're gonna go down and do a Proxmox server. And then we're going to allow anyone to connect, give it our host name. And then we're gonna go through the process of copying our credentials again. And you can see that at the bottom here, that public SSH key is, you know, set to our default STH1 one, because we've already set that up before starting this demo, but it literally just took a couple seconds to generate the key and then upload it. So this part is super repetitive. So we're just gonna speed this thing up so we can get through it a little bit faster. Everything you need to know in terms of what types of bare metal instance nodes we're using, we'll have that in the description so you can see. And with that, you can see that we have five servers that are actually deploying. The other thing that we're gonna do in the meantime is we're gonna go and download, or we're gonna go get the link to download Ubuntu server because we're gonna be using that for some of our VMs later. And so we wanna make sure that we can grab that image real fast from the UI. And so just getting the URL because we're killing a little bit of time here. Now one quick thing is that this is exactly when I managed to go and get that call. And so it was actually kind of nice because I was able to take a call while this was happening and I came back and it was time to go look at the servers. One really cool thing is that these are bare metal servers. I mean, you can literally see the HTML5 IKVM. This is a super micro IKVM. And you can actually see that, well, you can log into the console and you could actually go type in the console if you wanted to go do that. There's a web application that when you're logged in, you're able to go and connect to that. And so it's just kind of cool. You can kind of see every time these things fire up and they get provisioned, you can actually go start connecting to the console. Now, one of the nice things, of course, is the fact that not only is this provisioning the machine, but it's also installing Proxmox and it's setting up all the things like networking and stuff like that that you'd have to do manually. You don't have to necessarily go do that because it's being done for you by the cloud platform. And you're because you're using that, you're actually able to go and provision five of these machines at the exact same time for a dollar. Okay, now we're gonna go and we're gonna log in to the web management interface. And so you're gonna see we do PVE AM update. And the reason for that is that we wanna go and download all of the container templates and get a list of those. So that way we can go and pick those later. And so that's what we're doing there. And just kind of real quick, you can also go into the other Proxmox VE notes. And so you just, that's why we have that little notepad just cause it makes it kind of easy to go copy paste side to side. So we're just gonna go log into all those nodes just to make sure that we can get it in them all. And we can of course, and that's why we have this nice little notepad on the side to make this a very quick process. Okay, and now that we're in there, one thing that I do wanted to show you real quick is the fact that it's time to go and make a cluster. Now we're back on the first node. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this the dollar cluster. And one thing that I like to do is I always like to go and set up the different network interfaces. And so we're just gonna set up the internal network interfaces as well as the external network interfaces. So that way we have communication on all of the different channels potentially. You don't necessarily need to do that, but we're just gonna do that here because that will make sure that this happens very quickly. And now that that's done, we get the copy information so we can go get the join information. And then we can go to our other nodes and paste the join information and then also we can go and get the password for the first node, select our network interfaces to align to what we did to go set up the cluster. And now these nodes will start to join. So now basically the process is we're gonna go do that with all five nodes. And just one kind of little thing on when you do this is that sometimes you'll get like a connection error or something like that and you'll just have to kind of reload the web UI. And that just happens every once in a while when you're joining a Proxmox node to a cluster and so, you know, if that happens, that's basically how you fix it. You just hit refresh on the page, re-log in, and you're ready to go. Now, this is a super repetitive task, but just make sure that you're putting the right things in the right boxes because otherwise things will get screwed up. But, you know, overall, if you can do this, it's not too, too bad because it doesn't take that long. In fact, right now, we're gonna go and we're gonna get into, you know, our full five node cluster thing. And we're gonna have a total of only I think 12 or 13 minutes on the actual screen recording here. So this is not taking a lot of time and we probably could just kind of stop everything here, but I wanna just kind of point out a couple things that you might wanna go do. The first thing is I always like to just go and re-log in to all of the web management interfaces if I have them open, just because I like to make sure that, you know, nothing's kind of cached in a browser or anything like that and I'm kind of stuck on a wrong session. So I like to just go and refresh them all, make sure that I re-log in and I can go work on all the machines if I want to. Although the nice thing with Proxmox is that you can manage from one node, you can go manage all the other nodes once you have it in a cluster, which we have at this point. 
And you can see we have our five nodes online in our cluster. And in terms of you know, just other stats, we have a total of 56 CPU cores across our cluster. And we also have a total of 202 gigabytes of memory and over 2.6 terabytes of storage. Now, one thing I wanna do is when we did that PDE AM update, it kind of let us go get all of the images for containers and these are LXC containers. So we can just kind of go and start picking out some of the containers that we wanna download. You go to the actual local drive and you'll see that you can go to CT templates and then you can go to templates and then go pick the ones you wanna go download. And so there's a whole bunch of them here. Uh, there's also, if you do do the update, you'll see the turnkey ones. And so there's just an absolute, you know, absolute ton of things that you can just go and do in a container very quickly. One thing that is just kind of a little bit of a nuance of Proxmox is that whichever node that you download the container to, if you're on local storage instead of a shared storage, which is what we're doing here, that means that when you go and launch a container, you're going to want to be on the node that actually has the container that, or container template that you've downloaded, which kind of makes sense, but that's what you need to do. The other thing is we're gonna go download our Ubuntu server. And so we're gonna have that go and download. And one thing that you're gonna notice as I'm going through this is that I'm basically just hitting download and then I'm changing to a new, uh, I'm just kind of exiting out of the window and I'm going looking for something else. This actually will go and push the task to the background. So you can actually still work on the UI and keep downloading new things. You don't necessarily need to be sitting there on each one and just kind of waiting for it to download. So it saves you a little bit of time. And so at this point, I basically could just, you know, stop the entire demo because we actually have a system that, you know, we have our templates, we have our ISO image for a VM, for Ubuntu VMs. We have five nodes connected in a cluster. I mean, we have everything already set up, but I do want to just kind of, just kind of show you, you can actually go create an LXC container. And so just real quick, we're going to set up an Ubuntu container. So an LXC container. And one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to want to make sure that we are on our node 20, which is the one that we downloaded all the templates to, because that's where the templates for the containers are. And so that's what we're going to go set up now. And one of the kind of cool things is you can see that you can actually get this stuff all set up without having to go and you know do a whole bunch of commands and stuff like that. It's actually pretty easy to get this stuff up and running. One thing I do like to do is I do like to change some of the defaults in terms of the storage, the memory, and also the CPUs, just because usually, I mean, for most OSs these days, the defaults that are in Proxmox are actually too low to actually you know kind of really power some of the operating systems and, and stuff that you would do today. The other thing you can do, of course, is that you do have extra IPs that are being assigned to each of the machines because you're on a 29. So because of that, you know, you do actually, you do have the ability to go set up like a public IP for a container on this, and then you can actually go and pass traffic directly to it, which is interesting. Again, you know, there's there are reasons that you don't want to necessarily do that from a security standpoint, but you totally could. And that's just something that you get with this solution. The other thing I want to do real quick is I want to create a virtual machine. And so we're going to make it Ubuntu virtual machine. And again, we're going to now select the ISO that we had been downloading. And we're just gonna kind of go through and, you know, I usually switch to a vert IO block device for the storage. I also usually go to like four cores. On a small Xeon E system like this, you may not wanna go all the way up to four cores, but you know, generally it's okay, especially for just a quick lab, eight gigabytes of memory. And then basically after we, we've done that, we're all set and you can actually say to go start the machine. And so you can start the installation process from that ISO directly there. Now, something else you can do is that you can immediately go and say like, hey, I'm gonna go migrate these containers and VMs to different machines. And so with the first Ubuntu container, while the VM is being made, we're gonna go and start migrating that container to a different node. Something else you can do, by the way, is like for that VM, we can actually go and just add like another hard drive because you have all that local storage. So you're not like, you know, if you're on AWS, you'd be spinning up EBS storage or something like that. You don't even need to go do that. You can just go and attach another virtual drive on there. And so that makes life like just really nice. One thing though, is that if you do go and migrate the VM, you're gonna wanna delete that, that ISO file or that CD drive because otherwise it'll fail the migration because it'll say like, okay, well I have to go and I have this ISO attached, but the ISO is no longer local storage because it'll be on a different node. It's just something with Proxmox to just be aware of that that's something that you would go do if you wanted to start migrating those. And then from there, we can basically just kind of keep creating VMs and do whatever the heck we want. Um, you know, basically the sky's the limit. You can go do whatever you want to go do on the lab. But I just kind of want to show you guys that this was only like 20 minutes or so into the, the screen capture. And, you know, we're already at the point where, you know, this thing is, is up running. We have VMs, containers running. We're migrating stuff. I mean, we're customizing these VMs. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's gone on already. And, you know, this is literally a dollar an hour cluster. And that container is on node 23. 
And we're gonna go make that an HA container now. And we're gonna go and start that process. And just kind of like, you know, you can work through this and there's guides online and how to go do all this stuff. But I just kind of want to show you that like, you know, now we're already in less than 22 minutes, we're already starting making like HA, start doing the HA work and stuff like that on some of these containers and VMs. One thing that is a little bit of a bummer on this is just the fact that because we don't necessarily have external storage already set up for this, we are gonna just, you know, we're not gonna really have a backup target or anything like that. One thing you can do, of course, is you could just go spin up another bare metal server and then use that just as a backup node as just like kind of a cheap place to keep your VM. So if you wanna go spin down the main lab, for like, you know, say you're not gonna do anything for a week or something like that, you could actually spin down the main lab, put it all onto a very inexpensive node and put all your VMs onto an inexpensive node and then just use the backup feature to just restore from backups when you go and pick up your new node. So that's just kind of an idea or when you wanna pick up your lab again. And so it's just kind of an idea to save some money if you wanted to try that. One other quick thing is that the passwords that are generated are definitely strong passwords, but you may want to go and turn on things like two-factor authentication, and you can totally go do that in the system as well. There's a whole bunch of things that you might do from a security perspective that's different from what we're doing. And also, of course, if you had a production cluster, you wouldn't necessarily want to go and have like complete unrestricted access to the management interfaces. You definitely want to go and restrict that access to you know kind of a minimum set of IPs. But of course, just for doing this demo and doing it quickly, I just wanted to kind of show you what this looked like. A final little note is that Phoenix Snap actually makes Proxmox installs like using a relatively new version. And so what that basically means is that there's not a ton of updates when you go and get this. So it's not like one of those ones that you have like an ancient version of Proxmox being installed and then you have to go wait like an hour for all the updates to happen. In fact, you can go set this whole lab up. We set this entire lab up without doing the updates first, but it is something that you might wanna go do and you may actually have to go reboot the nodes when you do it. But of course, since this is a cluster, those nodes will just rejoin the cluster if you do reboot them. So it's not really a big deal. One other quick note from a quality of life standpoint is that the nodes that we're actually using here, the only the 33 cent nodes actually have dual 10 gigabit connections. The other three nodes only have dual one gig connections. And so that actually does limit when you're doing things like VM migration and stuff like that, that actually does limit your performance because you just don't have that high speed of networking. And so just something that if you did wanna go and have higher speed VM migrations and all that kind of stuff, you might wanna just go pick nodes that are a little bit more expensive just to get that 10 gigabit per second ethernet. Again, Proxmox is a awesome solution. There's absolutely a ton of options. So you can go do things like you can add firewall, you know, security groups and rules and all that kind of stuff, ACLs. You can go do all that kind of stuff in Proxmox. Remember this is Debian Linux at its base, but there's a ton of functionality in the web interface. So it's super fast to go set up and do. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at setting up a five node Proxmox VE Intel Xeon bare metal cluster in only like 22 minutes and it only cost a dollar. I mean, we literally did this entire demo in an hour. Now, of course, we did go and delete all of these machines so you're not gonna be able to log in using the credentials that you see in this video. But I just wanted to kind of show you what this whole thing looks like because I thought like, oh my gosh, this is super cool. And if you are someone that is thinking like, hey, maybe I wanna go try out Proxmox, this is a very inexpensive way to go do it. You don't necessarily need to provision machines. You don't necessarily have to have a big home lab or anything like that. And you can get an entire cluster. So if it's something that you're looking at for work or something like that, this would be a great way to go and actually, you know, get your feet wet and try it out. And then at the same time, if you did wanna just go operate it and you didn't wanna like go find a data center or something like that, you didn't wanna go buy machines or you can't buy machines because right now the supply chain situation is pretty, pretty tight. What you can actually just go do is you can go and just spin up machines and you can spin them up in the US. You can do them in Amsterdam, you can do them in Singapore. So there's different locations that you can go and spin up machines and create clusters wherever the heck you want to go build infrastructure on. So I guess that's why I thought that this was super cool and I just wanted to share it with you. Now we're gonna be doing some more things we've already done in Project Tiny Mini Micro node with a single you know, node as a Proxmox VE host. We're gonna have a cluster and a couple other really kind of cool things coming this quarter, really based on you know the idea of kind of building out some of these kind of cool clusters. So if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.